This is without doubt the most masterfully crafted work of omniscient storytelling I have ever read. Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I am here to give you my official book review of Augustus by John Williams. This is a book that I honestly would not have read if not for the encouragement of some of my booktube friends who had read it last year and really, really loved it and encouraged me to read it. I love historical fiction, but I read it much more sparsely than I read fantasy, and so I was kind of in the mood for it. This is an era of history that I don't gravitate to as much. Greek and Roman history is something that I find interesting on occasion, but it's definitely not something that I magnetize to on a regular basis. That being said, I knew that Augustus was a pretty small read. It's only about 320 pages, I believe, not even 300 pages. And I was looking for something that I could buddy read with my dad because my dad is a big fan of kind of history, a little bit of classics, and mostly nonfiction. So trying to find things that overlap for the two of us for a buddy read is a bit difficult. The only thing that I knew about this book specifically going into it was that John Williams' prose and storytelling style was something that people could not stop talking about. And I'm going to tell you why, because now I can't stop talking about it, because they were absolutely right. This book is told in an epistolary format, which if you don't know means that it is told in the form of letters. Mostly letters, there are the occasional like military order or things of that nature, diary entries, etc. The other thing that kind of blew my mind about the fact that this is an epistolary novel is it says on the back of the book that it was the first time John Williams had ever attempted an epistolary novel, which as a fellow writer, this was his debut epistolary novel. <sighs> like, what's the point? But in any case, this is a masterful work of historical fiction, and I have read a lot of historical fiction in a lot of different genres. This has to be, this has to be, if not the best, in my top two or three without hesitation. This is the story of Gaius Octavius, who would later go on to become Octavius Caesar or Caesar Augustus. There was this moment in Rome where there were people from all sides who were trying to quick shove their foot in the door of the power that Julius Caesar had left behind. His named heir and the person that he wanted to succeed him was Caesar Augustus or Gaius Octavius. There is so much political maneuvering in this book, and usually I have a hard time following all of the political maneuvering and machinations of different characters. This book lays it out in a way that is actually surprisingly easy to follow. Having been a reader of fantasy for so long, one of the things that kind of was familiar to me, I guess, about the way that John Williams went about telling this story is the fact that he told it from a multi-POV, something that we're very used to in fantasy, right? We have a event or some period of time that's told from the perspective of multiple characters. And John Williams did the same thing in this novel, just with an epistolary format. The way this story is told, where we're getting these viewpoints of Caesar from all these different angles kind of lends itself to that mythological pedestal that he was put on at the time and gives us this kind of distance from him. We get a complete 360 view of this incredibly famous ruler of Rome in a way that brings him to life I think so much more powerfully than it would have if it was told completely from his point of view. This is the kind of story that really brings history off the pages and really makes it come to life in a way that you can see these people being real and living and breathing. And in my opinion, that is exactly what historical fiction, good historical fiction, should do. There are so many themes from the past in this story that we can literally yank right through to the present. There's so much about about government and betrayal and political maneuvering and friendship and celebrity and all of these things and how how things are so fleeting and how in the space of one generation empires can be built and tumble back down. There's an incredible amount of history contained in this 300 pages. We go all the way from Julius Caesar's assassination to Octavius Caesar's death, and yet it never felt 
to me, overwhelming. It was beautifully written. The prose is stunning. The letters all have very distinct voices. So each character that we meet in this story, it was I was picking out little things in the letters that they were writing. I was like, oh, yep, that's Agrippa because everything's very straight to the point. There were several points in this book where I cried. Um, and if a book can make me cry, that's an immediate point. There's so much, you guys. I would highly recommend this, even for someone who maybe knows, like, you've heard the name Mark Anthony and Cleopatra, you probably, like, vaguely know that Caesar Augustus and Julius Caesar were em emperors of Rome. If that's the extent of your Greek and Roman history, that's okay. I think that this book is actually very accessible for someone who just has a little bit of historical, very, very basic historical knowledge and has read, is, you know, fairly well read. I really don't think you're going to need a whole lot of hand-holding through this book. Even on a first read with very little context, I think these characters really come off the page and just absolutely blew my mind. This book, if this book isn't in my top books of the year, I will be absolutely shocked. If it's not in my top couple books of the year, I will be absolutely shocked. I will say that one of the things you will want to keep track of or pay attention to is the to so-and-so from so-and-so at the beginning of every letter, and there will also be a date. The date is really important because this book does time hop a little bit. It goes from later on in Caesar Augustus's reign back to when he was a boy and he was just at the very beginning of things. So you do want to pay attention to the dates at the beginning of the letters. I was a little confused at first because I was being a bad reader and like not paying attention. It really paints a picture of Octavius in a way that to me was one of the most nuanced character studies I've ever read. Um, and that's really what this is in my opinion because Yes, it's told from multi-POV, however, the axis of the story is Caesar Augustus, and everything that we read in every letter, in every report, in every diary entry from every person revolves around him and his rise to power and then his maintenance of that power. I haven't even written my Goodreads review for this book yet. I'm going to do that later this afternoon because I needed time. I finished this about a week and a half ago. And I needed time to just sit with it because this is one of those books that you will not stop thinking about after you've read it. It's something that I would love to read again. The first, you know, section of this book I would get even more out of now that I've read the whole thing. This is the kind of character storytelling that I aspire to. The only book that I've read recently that I can put even in the same category as this as far as just the level of nuanced character storytelling is Birth of an Empire by Khan Igledon, and that's the story of the rise to power of Genghis Khan, um, another incredibly prolific historical leader. But they're told in such vastly different ways. <laughs> they're so different. They're so different. And I think that the epistolary format for this book just worked so well. It's beautiful. And I wasn't sure how I was going to feel about it at first, but once I really started to get going, it did not take me very long to immerse into the world. I had a horrible time putting it down. <laughs> so yeah, my recommendation, if you're a historical uh, fiction reader, even if you're not, even if you're a fantasy reader or a fiction reader or whatever, a literary fiction reader, there is so much in this book to be enjoyed by a plethora of genre lovers. You're going to get the lyrical, beautiful storytelling prose that um, people enjoy about literary fiction. You're going to get the vast, epic, uh, multi-POV battles and political machinations that we love so much about fantasy. You're also going to get living, breathing historical figures. For those of us that love reading about history and different uh, people within that history, there's a lot to love in this book. And I think I'm going to stop myself there because I'm kind of rambling at this point, but 
high, high recommend from me. This is an instant five-star read. I knew it was going to be a five-star read about a third of the way through the book, and it didn't change. Anyways, if you've read this book, I would love to continue this conversation in the comments below. Feel free to comment about what section impacted you the most. I would love to know if uh, you've read anything else in this era that you think is another good read for somebody who has who is read Augustus, um, or if you're adding it to your TBR, let me know that too. So I hope you guys are having a fabulous reading month. I hope you are reading five-star reads, and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>